My name is J.H. Chaudhary. I'm basically a farmer turned into a technocrat. Now I'm a civil servant. In my journey of the last uh, 30 years, what I've noticed, how the technology has really transformed the lives of the people, whether common people who are living in the villages, people living in the cities like Bangalore, everywhere, I mean, even uh, small kids, there's so much of disruptive technologies are sweeping the world in India too. And how this technology has impacted the life, particularly the common man's life. I want to tell you a story how this disruptive technologies helped a common man living in a small village called Batalpalli, which is about four hours journey from uh, Bangalore airport. Let us see his story. His name is uh, Ramaya. Mr. Ramaya lives uh, in a small village. He has got uh, two acres of land and is a vegetable farmer. And uh, he takes loan from the nearby cooperative bank and he grows tomatoes and other vegetables. He comes to all the way to Bangalore in a truck and he tries to sell his tomatoes in the market in uh, Bangalore. Then he starts talking to the, some of the dealers vegetable dealers to get a better price. But unfortunately for him, the, even he was not able to get the cost of the transporting from uh, Batalpalli to Bangalore, and they were giving a price which is not at all, uh, uh, I mean, comfortable for the farmer. Finally, he got disgusted the way things were happening. He dumps all the farm uh, produce, tomatoes, in front of the market and leaves to his village, Batalpalli. Then the whole night, he started thinking about, oh, I've taken loan, and now I have not got anything. All the expenditure I uh, spent, how do I take care of my farming activities, how to take care of my family. All that the whole night, he was not able to sleep. Next day morning, he wants to go to his farm again, thinking that he can come with a, maybe a better uh, uh, crop, maybe potatoes, maybe something like that. He wanted to, because farmers are actually, though I was also uh, a startup uh, company uh, entrepreneur and also become a venture capitalist. Of all the entrepreneurs, the most successful and risky entrepreneurs are farmers. So every time, I mean, uh, they take a lot of risks. In spite of all the problems, he goes to the farm and he wants to do something else in his farm. When he goes to his farm, he finds somebody else is filling his farm. He asks him, why are you coming into my farm? It is my farm and uh, you're not supposed to enter. He said, no, 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 I have all the documents. These are my documents and I have a right to do the farming here. Then afterwards he came to know that the gentleman, uh, somebody has duplicated his uh, Patadar passbooks and sold his property to some XYZ. And he was not able to argue with him because he has got the documents. Then he went to the nearby <coughs> Mandal Revenue Officer's office. He complains. He says, this is what injustice has happened to me. Can you save me? Unfortunately, that officer demanded a lot of money. As it is, he doesn't have any money. And plus, he lost his uh, whatever the land that uh, he had. On top of that, there is no justice for him because the office is demanding some money. He doesn't know what to do. Many of the farmers uh, in India, they are in this kind of a situation, particularly till recently, most of the farm, because I myself, a small farmer in that village, I've seen all these uh, atrocities. During 90s, when uh, Honorable uh, Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, Chandra Babu Naidu, when he came to power, I was with Software Technology Park at the time at Hyderabad. One day there was a meeting. In that meeting, our honorable chief minister was telling to eradicate the corruption by changing one officer and bringing another officer, though other officer may be good, but the environment is polluting him and he's also becoming a corrupt officer. So how many officers I keep on changing? I can't even put all of them in the jail, but how do I run the administration? Then how do I remove all the middlemen, they are the problems for the society, particularly for the common man. Then he thought about 
If only we introduce a digital interface between the common man and the government officer. The common man does not have to go to the government officer at all. He will only go to the digital interface. Whatever he wants, he can get the things done. That's how he visualized the so-called e-governance, the e-seva came into existence during the 90s. And he became the father of uh, e-governance in the country. And all the other states also started emulating that model. And that really resulted, I myself noticed when I visited uh, my village, uh, Bratalapalli, many farmers, I asked them, what are you, these days, are you going to any government offices for uh, getting any of uh, the benefits and all that? No, 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 sir, we, we go to nearby Iseva kiosks, and whatever we want, we are able to get those things done. We hardly go to any government offices. And uh, I asked them about, uh, how are you able to market your goods? No, 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 these days, I mean, uh, uh, we are using the mobile, smart mobiles, we take the photographs and put it in a uh, uh, the big basket, and other uh, uh, fellows are coming to us, and we are able to get a very good price. So use of the technology benefited uh, the farmer, particularly the farmer Ramaya. He had two acres of land earlier. Now, because of all the changes happened, in addition to that, what happened after the Honorable Prime Minister introduced the Jandhan program, why the Jandhan program was introduced in the country, most of the benefits which are which are supposed to go to the people, they were not going to the people. Ninety percent percent of those benefits were eaten away by the middlemen. Only ten percent of them were going to the common man or people of uh, India. That's when he started. Why can't we have all the people who have the bank account so that we can directly transfer the money instead of giving in its kind? That really worked like a miracle. Many millions of people who are unbanked, today they have bank accounts. Not only the bank account, they have, they are operating the mobile bank accounts. All the money is coming directly from the various governments and whatever he is uh, getting from this big basket and other uh, e-commerce transactions is also going to the bank. Now, the two, far, uh, two acre farmer, he has got uh, 10 acres and he is able to do wonderfully well. That's all point, that's all Bahubali one, uh, which is really the digital Bahubali one, which made the Ramaya very, very happy. Then let us come to the Bahubali two. I was actually traveling from uh, Delhi to Hyderabad about five years back. One uh, very senior politician, I don't want to name, he was also sitting with me. He was asking me, Chaudhary Garu, he digital technologies, all this digital technology you people are talking, e-seva, me-seva, it's all fine. But we are politicians. We have to go to the polls every five years. Then I have to go and ask, you have to vote for me. They said, what is that you have done? I don't have any discretionary power. Whether X is uh, my party man, Y is another uh, opposition party man, they're all same on the digital platform. So I'm not able to really do justice for my uh, people. So this is really creating a lot of problems uh, for people like us. That was the comment uh, he made. Then, of course, many corrupt bureaucrats, corrupt uh, government officers, they want the digital Bahubali one to fail. They were looking for a cut up kind of a person to kill Bahubali, digital Bahubali, so that they will again go back to the old way of making money. Let us see what happened to our poor Ramaya. He had uh, 10 acres now. He has got a lot of money in the bank from the government and whatever he's selling. And he has got two children. He wanted to get them married. And uh, he took some money from some of his friends for the uh, performing the marriage and took some loans also. And he was planning to perform the marriage of uh, one of his uh, children. One day, he went to the bank. He wants to take some money out and for some of the activities. Then to his shock, he found that all the money which was saved and uh, got uh, from various sources, they all gone. When he asked the banker, he said, uh, no, we don't know anything about it. There's no money, somebody else has taken away. Then when they saw the transaction, they found that somebody from other countries, they hacked into account, taken away all the money. The farmer was really shocked. He, don't, he doesn't know anything because whatever money he had, 
Earlier, he was happily transacting by using the cash for everything. Today, he has got a bank account. All the money is in the, was in the bank, and uh, that money has gone. And he has taken a lot of loans. That money was also in the bank. That money has also gone. And all those people who have given the money to him, they will come after him. He has to sell his house and sell his uh, property. He has pledged his uh, 10 acres of land. So this farmer doesn't know what to do. Many of the people in this Ramaya situation, they are committing suicide along with their family members. Our poor Ramaya is losing trust in the digital India. He says, no, this is not working for me. It's better to go back when there is no digital initiatives in the country. This what exactly the villains, the so-called corrupt politicians, corrupt bureaucrats, corrupt government officers, they want the digital India program to fail so that the common man who is the vote bank, they can put the pressure on the government. No, 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 this is not working. There are a lot of hack hacking is happening. And because of the cyber hacking, people are unhappy. So let us go back, switch back to the old paper-based model. This is what everybody is looking at. Then our chief minister one day, he called us. Look, I mean, uh, looks like uh, this is going to be a big danger for the entire initiatives what we have taken during 90s. And today, the people are losing trust on what we are doing. When the people lose their trust on what initiatives, the digital initiatives that uh, we are pushing for the benefit of them, if they don't have trust, it is very difficult to, for us to implement these things. So do something. Is there any way for us to come out of this uh, situation? Then all of us uh, started talking to some of the experts in the industry. We came to Bangalore, met some of my friends. I went to Silicon Valley, met a lot of people. Some of the people started telling, Jay, I mean, there is one possibility. There is one trust protocol called blockchain technology. Probably that could be a savior. Some people said, no, no, there are a lot of scaling issues, efficiency issues. It is working in the Bitcoin, but it's not working in the, the real uh, this thing. So that is the kind of uh, feedback also we received. But finally, we took the risk. We want to introduce, because they, otherwise the whole program will fail. We wanted to do some pilots. We did two pilots, one on the land registration, the other one is in the transportation uh, segment. In both the pilots, we saw the benefits of this blockchain technology. We can ring fence whatever the digital assets we have so that the trust is taken care of because of immutability, because of uh, intermediation, all the attributes of the blockchain technology. We thought that it definitely is going to solve and nobody can hack into the uh, system and take away the sensitive data, take away the money from the farmers or whoever it is. And we thought that uh, this is a one technology that uh, we, we should definitely adopt. Then we went and told our honorable chief minister that, sir, we found the one technology. We are not sure whether this technology alone can bring all that uh, what we are looking at. But whatever we have observed, whatever based on the pilots, probably the, this technology may be along with other few technologies we will be able to safeguard the interest of the common man in the country. That's when our Honorable Chief Minister launched a program called Project AP Blockchain 2019. What does it mean? Now, in Andhra Pradesh, we're implementing e-pragati. All the facets of uh, activities, all the departments are already digitized, and they're all in enterprise. Uh, it's called e-pragati. Now all those uh, department, uh, IT, digital assets, and all those things, we want to put them on the blockchain by end of uh, 2019, thinking that this Bahubali 2 will safeguard the common interest of the people. And based on whatever we are doing, the work, the research, and all that, looks like we are able to enhance the happiness index of the common man using this uh, technology and associated, associated uh, technologies. We are only hoping that the happiness index of the farmer is going to be in the rise because he is now ring-fenced with all his uh, digital assets are secure and no middleman because of the intermediation uh, attribute of the uh, blockchain. And blockchain is the trust protocol 
highly transparent. We thought that uh, using this uh, technology, we will be able to make the common man who is living in the villages, he's able to be very happy. He's not worried about uh, somebody taking away his money and not necessarily to go to a, a government officer and uh, gives the bribe and all that this thing. And he is not going to lose his uh, property because somebody is going to hack the records and uh, change the titles and all that this thing. All that can be avoided, provided if you provide this kind of a fortification around the common man. We are, at this point of time, 60% we are very, very hopeful that this is going to happen. If you don't do this, all of you are uh, aware that in India, all our digital assets doors, we kept, keep everything open. In fact, recently somebody was telling the so-called IoT solutions. People are not even checking whether the passwords set by the factory, they don't even change the passwords of those IoT devices. And a lot of malware is sitting in most of the hardware that we were importing. And we are happily using all that uh, uh, malware infected hardware, malware infected software, and IoT, which is not even properly checked. With all this, this thing, we are literally, on one side, we are going in total uh, less cash, uh, digital payments, digital India, all that is fine. But when you open our doors to any hacker to enter into house and loot all of us, people will lose trust. Instead of digital India, it may become digital disaster. So to avoid the digital disaster for the country, I think we need to apply because we are good in technology and definitely India can not only blockchain, maybe, maybe Bangalore scientists here, they can come with a new technology which can really 100% provide the safety and security we want safe, secure, and smart India. Thank you.